Science is getting closer and closer to figuring out why exactly some moms experience a low milk supply. A new study released in the December edition from the Journal of Nutrition highlighted that moms with a low milk supply and were unable to exclusively breastfeed their babies had higher obesity and higher inflammatory biomarkers than the moms who were able to produce a full supply. We can use this new information to help prepare moms in advance who are wanting to breastfeed in order to help them achieve their goals. So I'm going to share more on what this means and give you actionable steps that you can take in order to reduce your low milk supply risk. But first, I'm going to give a little bit of context from the main takeaways from the study. So here you'll see the data that was collected from the study in this chart, and it categorized the participants in three groups. One was very low, mod being moderate. So they produced a moderate amount of milk, but it wasn't a full supply. And the control group being the moms who were able to produce a full milk supply and be able to breastfeed their babies entirely. So you'll see that obesity here was one of the indicators they used to measure moms who were more at risk for a low milk supply, and then they also measure these inflammatory biomarkers. Now, to be clear, inflammation isn't a bad thing. It only becomes a problem when there's too much of it in your body. But looking back to the data, you can see that nearly all of the results were deemed statistically significant. And what that means is that these variables are likely to be contributing to what is being tested. And in this case, they were measuring for low milk supply. CRP stands for C-reactive protein. It's a protein in your body that is released by your liver that when you have increased levels of inflammation in your body, the level of CRP rises. So this is definitely a bad thing. And TNF-alpha is an adipokine and cytokine basically a protein in your body that promotes insulin resistance. So based on this data, you are at a higher risk of having a low milk supply if you have a high BMI and if you have high inflammation in your body. And keep in mind, all of these numbers were tested postpartum when the study began. This corresponds well with the understanding that thyroid conditions, PCOS, insulin resistance, diabetes, all of these conditions are underlying root causes and contributing factors to a mom who has a low milk supply. And if you want a full list of the factors that we know can contribute to a low milk supply, I have a free guide that I will link in the description below. So one question I have based off looking at this data is were these moms who had a high BMI also at a high BMI prior to conceiving? Because that also makes me want to know if the moms who were considered very low or moderate with their milk supply were at higher risk based off of how healthy their pregnancy was. Like, did this occur because they had too much weight gain during their pregnancy? Or was this something that they were already set up for uh, an increased risk prior to even conceiving? Because another thing that we know from a 2014 study is that insulin resistance is actually a natural occurrence during pregnancy anyways. In fact, the further along in your pregnancy you are, the higher your insulin resistance becomes. Now, this is considered healthy and biologically normal for a pregnancy within reasonable levels. This process happens during pregnancy with all the shifting of your hormones, and it's actually for the benefit of your baby. This is to help send your glucose and nutrients in your body down to the placenta so your baby has what it needs to grow. Insulin resistance is on a spectrum from insulin sensitive all the way up to diabetes. It's what I call the pre-diabetes to pre-diabetes. And a lot of this can be determined based off of your blood work numbers and how severe they are. The problem is when you enter pregnancy already in a state of insulin resistance that is too high and it only continues to escalate throughout your pregnancy. This is also likely a contributing factor for glandular tissue growth and development during pregnancy because we know insulin is a hormone that actually has an impact on that tissue growth. So if your insulin is off, you may have trouble with forming the necessary amount of tissue needed to establish a full milk supply. So I'm going to dive into what I would recommend, but keep in mind, this is solely based off of the information presented and this is not medical advice. So if you're planning on exclusively breastfeeding and you have yet to become pregnant, this is probably the best case scenario because you can get ahead of the curve by entering pregnancy at a healthy BMI and working in advance to reduce inflammation in your body. Now, if you're already pregnant and you're worried that these factors might apply to you, I would work with a nutritionist who is both an expert in prenatal nutrition as well as insulin resistance. They can help you figure out how to best support your body throughout the remainder of your pregnancy, all while trying to really bring down that insulin resistance and inflammation within your body. This will be both supportive of breastfeeding down the road, but also your weight gain throughout your pregnancy in order to try and keep that inflammation down and the BMI down when it comes time to deliver your baby. So with this information, you are in a position of more control over the outcomes that you can be facing, and you can use this knowledge to actually help you in achieving your goals. Now, if you already gave birth and are currently struggling with a low milk supply, I encourage you to click or tap on the next video where I tell you what to do about a low milk supply. I break it all down in what I call the low milk supply ABCs.